Blog Talk Radio. Hello out there, everybody. It is Tuesday, May 8th, 2012. I am David Domzowski, founder of The Financial Bin and host of Financial Bin Radio. Now, before I introduce you to today's guest, let me share a few quick notes with you. First off, as I've tried to remind you for the past several months now, don't forget to pick up your copy of Entrepreneur Intervention, Triumphs and Failures of Entrepreneurs. You can do so for just 99 cents on Kindle, Nook, iPad, and other e-readers, and you can also get a paperback copy for just under $10 at Amazon and CreateSpace. Go to financialbid.com and come and click on the book section at the very top next to the login button for more information. Now, secondly, we're still in the editing and formatting process. We're winding down right now for Landlord Intervention. Now, this is a book by a gentleman who has been in the real estate rental business for over 20 years, and he gives you a fantastic step-by-step how-to guide for you to begin your own career as a landlord. And this should be this should be debuting later this month. We're almost done. Uh, or probably with the e-reader, it'll probably be in early June. So now let me introduce you to our guest. His name is Anthony Del Medico. Anthony is the founder of Dell Visionaries, a community whose goal it is to educate and help our youth as well as adults on learning and experiencing entrepreneurship. And that's that's a goal for, for us here at the Financial Bin as well. Now as part of his goal, Anthony started what is called the E2 Petition, and this aims to make entrepreneurship a part of the core curriculum for all public school students in grades 4 through 12. And Anthony joins us right now to talk all about it. Anthony, welcome to Financial Bin Radio. Good afternoon. It's great It's great to have you here, Anthony. The Actually, give me one second. I'm having a little technical difficulty here. I'm having trouble getting you live. There we go. Now you're on. Okay, Anthony, welcome to the program. Now, now, the first question I have for you, Anthony, is can you give us a little account of, of, of before you started the YouTube petition and before you started Dell Visionaries, what's your background? My, my background, I've basically been an entrepreneur my whole life. started my first business when I was geez, 10 years old. Um, I went through a uh, – I did the military thing after after high school to pay for college. My family didn't have a lot of money growing up, which was one of the – it's one of the motivations I had as a, as a young kid to learn entrepreneurship. Um, did the military thing after after high school, uh, got the Army College Fund, and then eventually got my MBA at one of the top 25 business schools. You know, but while I was going through school back then, I, I always wondered why they weren't teaching entrepreneurship in, sure. in K through 12, but also even at, at colleges. You know, 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, most colleges weren't teaching entrepreneurship. In fact, just now, recently, Maybe 15, 20 percent of the colleges around the country are starting entrepreneurship programs, uh, but they're all relatively new. And K through 12, K through 12 doesn't touch on the subject at all. And that was always something I kind of wondered growing up. Uh, I was I was in junior achievement as a uh, junior in high school, and you know that's an after school program that focuses on entrepreneurship, but it wasn't a wasn't a part of core curriculum in K through 12 then, and still not today. Um, Later on, later on in life, I've, I've started all you know different businesses throughout the last 20 years, um, and recently, I, I suppose it was a recession in 2008 that kind of started triggering some motivations. That I have a, also have a six-year-old daughter. I started being concerned about uh, what she's learning in school, and that that kind of brought me to uh, brought me to a point where I wrote a, I wrote a book for kids to teach them how to start their own business. It's called The Little Green Money Machine, and I invented a uh, business stand which is a multi-purpose business stand that kids pick the business template from the book and then they launch it through the stand, you know, so for, for, for kids, especially from that eight to 14 range for them to actually learn and be motivated to start a business, they can't just read about it. It's not, it's not a, just an academic experience. It's gotta be something they can go play or do or experience just like us real entrepreneurs. You know? And, uh, that, that whole process of launching that product line and that company led me to, um, I was invited to the Fee Summit, which is the Future of Entrepreneurship uh, of Education in D.C. in November 2011, mm-hmm. and uh, that that was where three or four hundred people got together in Washington there and came up with ideas to tackle uh, America's unemployment and economic issues and really study entrepreneurship in ways we could expand entrepreneurship in America. You know, and uh, I was one of the keynote speakers. So my grand idea for that speech was, you know, that petition that you see today, on, you know, that's online, that's, uh, online the E2 squared petition. Mm-hmm. And that's to uh, 
that that you know that that entrepreneurship should be a, a required core curriculum. You know, no different than math, English, or science in our schools. And so that's that's kind of how it all came to be. That's the evolution. Okay. Well, well, before we get before we get into more about the the petition itself, could you tell us a little bit about Dell Visionaries and your work there? Yeah, Dell Visionaries is a parent company. Um, of the you know the, the the products that I've launched to help kids learn about business, the books that I wrote, okay. and there's, there's a website. It's basically just a a philosophy or movement to gear more people, you know, to experience entrepreneurship. And uh, okay. I started at the younger spectrum, which is the youth, because there seems to be a you know you go to Barnes and Nobles today, go to the info desk and ask them if there's any books that actually teach kids about business or entrepreneurship or even teens, and they'll tell you that they don't have any, which right. is shocking. You know, in America, you go, you go look at Toys R Us, Target, and a lot of these retail stores, the toy stores and, you know, the games and the board games, all that stuff, and there's very few products, almost non-existent, that expose youth to entrepreneurship. So to me, as an entrepreneur, I felt that there was a niche or an opportunity in this area. Definitely. Both both as an entrepreneur to launch products and books, but also, be, you know, if we can expose our youth entrepreneurs at a younger age, they'll, they'll grow in association with it. So as they grow older, you know, become more comfortable with it. You know, starting business and entrepreneurship is really about experiencing things, successes and failures. And so uh, it, it just seems like there's a niche in that market. And you combine that with what's going on in our economy right now, lack of jobs, you know, unemployment, you know, unemployment right. somewhat reduced, now at eight or nine percent, but it's still uh, it's still not an acceptable level of five percent. And then if you actually look at youth unemployment, which is that sixteen to thirty year old market, that's mm-hmm. actually twenty six percent. And right. in some in some cities around the country, it's it's a, it's in the low thirties. You know, you look at you know Detroit, Michigan, and Washington D.C. And so youth unemployment is rampant. And that and I'm not we're not just talking about our general general youth, but even college grads. You know, there's two point four million college grads today that can't find jobs in their fields of study. Absolutely. And so they're broke, unemployed, uh, usually working as a lot of them in our you know, waiters, races, bartenders, living at home with mom and dad, uh, and in debt up to their eyeballs with college debt. And so there's something right. wrong with the way our education system is gearing, you know, our it, it's like an assembly line. It's gearing our students towards a corporate America and a job expectation that's not there anymore. And, uh, I think I think those seeds of entrepreneurship we need, we need to start back with the youth, which is that 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 age bracket of you know I say fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. Uh, that's where it needs to start planting the seeds, and uh, you know, but especially in that K through 12 market. Because let's face it, only 25% of uh, high school grads actually go on to earn a college degree. So now you have that whole that whole other spectrum, that 75%. You know, what's in store for them? You know, if you even take the college grads out, they can't find jobs. Just talk about the high school grads. And then you got the whole teen dropout rate. You know, 1.2 million teens drop out of school annually. That's like right. 3,200 students a day. We're almost almost approaching one third of, of uh, the graduating population. It doesn't you know? It doesn't make it to graduation. Uh, this is a huge dilemma for America. You know, it's a brain drain basically. Definitely. Yeah. If 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 we if we introduce entrepreneurship at a young age, we're gonna we're gonna reduce teen dropout rates. Kids are gonna be more likely to stay in school and learn because they're going to connect the dots. You know, that math class can seem a lot more interesting. Um, most students, you know, if, if you look at some of the statistics, 80% of the students drop out because the subject matter is not relevant to real life. They're not, they're not applying it to their futures they don't, you know, because they can't connect the dots. Entrepreneurship will help connect those dots, you know, improve that motivation. You can reduce teen dropout rates. You can, you can also reduce incarceration rates or in prisons. So there's a, there's a whole, there's a lot of positive economic and social benefits Right. Uh, by by launching that that East Square petition and launching entrepreneurship education in that K through 12 market. Now, now, Anthony, at the, at the beginning of the interview, you, you mentioned that uh, you know even even college programs are still kind of slow to really adopt entrepreneurship. You know, you, you have good ones like Babson, for instance. Uh, why do you why do you think entrepreneurship's taken a back seat so many times? Like, why why aren't more people? Why why isn't uh, you know? Entrepreneurship education already a core part of the core curriculum. What what do you think about that? Well, it's a good point. I mean, I, I went to one of the top twenty five business schools, as Carlson School of Management, which is a school attached to the University of Minnesota. They have a they had an MBA program. I went to the Advanced Placement MBA program, 
mm-hmm. you know, that's a hundred thousand dollar MBA degree, and they had one class called entrepreneurship, which which wasn't part of any kind of curriculum. It was just a really a no, theoretical it. class, you could say. Yeah. And yeah. I was shocked. I mean, I was shocked, and I, you know, while I was in college, I had the Army College Fund to uh, support my way through college, but. As I got into grad school, the Army College Fund money actually ran out. So I, uh, as an entrepreneur, I had to figure out a way to stay in college and pay my pay my bills. Mm-hmm. And getting a job and dropping out wasn't wasn't part of that. It wasn't an option for me. So I had to, uh, you know, I started a company while I was in college as a valet company. So you know, on Friday and Saturday nights, I'd probably have 60 or 70 guys parking cars at various nightclubs and restaurants, you know, uh, throughout downtown Minneapolis. Okay. And this helped pay my way through grad school. But it was this actual entrepreneurial experience, believe it or not, starting that company. I learned more starting that company wow. during that during that one year than I did from that hundred thousand dollar MBA degree, much more. And that's oh, when I really yeah. started thinking about you know, back then I even started thinking about like, geez, why don't they have a you know, some some practical entrepreneurship class where you actually go out and engage and start businesses and uh at the college level. But you know, as I become older now, you know, now I have a daughter a daughter approaching that that same age group. I'm starting to think about her and her future, and you know, is she going to be, is she going to be reliant on, on a government or corporate America for jobs, and or is she going to go create her own path? Well, of course, I want her to learn how to be an entrepreneur, and that's right. not an option for her to learn right now. And, and private schools or K through 12 schools, and uh, again, even the colleges are lacking. So that's kind of what brought me to that point. I don't, I don't know why, you know, this is America. This this country is founded upon it by entrepreneurs. Exactly. And it seems like we, in the last 30 years, we've moved away from it mm-hmm. and even even more so in recent times um you know the, the recession has brought a lot of people to realize that they're going to have to maybe have to start carving out uh their own futures you know because those jobs right. aren't, aren't 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 what they what they used to be and, they're, and it's going to continue in that direction globalization is going to drive jobs overseas right um the big corporations aren't you know aren't adding net jobs they're actually de- declining in net jobs you know, according to the SBA, 75% of all new jobs are created by small businesses led by entrepreneurs. So if it's jobs America's looking for, it just makes sense. We need to create more entrepreneurs. And the only way you're going to do that is by exposing some kind of a curriculum and activities and experiences to young kids, to high school kids, and, you know, colleges as well. But we let's not, let's not rule out the fact that uh, you know, only 25% of all high school grads go on to earn a college degree. Some 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 students just aren't geared for college academia. Some can't afford college, and so for all those other that other seventy five percent of our you know young adults that don't pursue that college degree, we need to we need they need an alternative path to the American dream. That alternative path is, is, is entrepreneurship. So we have to provide that to them, especially with where the, where the global economy is going. Right. So would you say, Anthony, that uh, it's basically a necessity? It's an it's an necessity for America, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What's going on with China and the global economy? Is, you know, if you look at, if you want to look at the macro macroeconomic reasons besides the ones that just here in America, mm-hmm. you know, the future global leader, you know, is is going to be determined by GDP and jobs. Right Perfect. now, our GDP is growing at two percent. China's is growing at ten percent. So we're still we still have the number one GDP in the globe. I think we're at sixteen trillion. China's mm-hmm. number two at five or six trillion. But they're growing at 10%. We're only growing at 2 So what, what that means is... And we owe them a lot of money, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We owe a lot of money, but in 30 years, they're going to pass us. If, if this was to continue, they'd pass us in terms of GDP, which means that's right. the jobs, the, the, you know, the cash that you're talking about, all, that's, all that moves around. And in, in the future, the, you know, in terms of global positioning and global leadership, it's not going to be won by the military. It's going to be won by GDP and jobs. So sure. produce, you know, how, you, how you produce more GDP and more jobs is, is you produce more entrepreneurs. Exactly. So the societies and the governments that understand this and stir the pot and, and really create programs and, and uh, schools and curriculum that gear active entrepreneurs in their populations, and lots of them, that's who's going to create the next industries, the next companies that create jobs and, and, the, and the economies and the Bill Gates and the Steve Jobs and all that good stuff. And some of these emerging countries are starting to understand that, which is why, you know, countries like China are inviting organizations like NFTE, which is the National Foundation of Teaching Entrepreneurship, inviting, uh, you know, their founder over there to speak to them. And, you know, there's a lot of that stuff going on because they're starting to figure that out. So, you know, America needs to step on it and figure it out. It, it really Andy. needs to be on a front. It needs to be on a front line of one of these presidential debates. It's that important. And, Definitely. uh, 
it, it affects jobs here. It affects teen dropout rates. It affects you know, the whole social economic dynamics going on in this country. But, you know, 20, 30 years from now, it's going to affect global leadership. Anthony, what kind of uh, feedback and media coverage have you received about the, your work with E2? Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, I've, I've formally launched it on, online about 30 days ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I've There's been a few magazines that have interviewed me. Uh, it's, okay. it's fairly new. You know, mm-hmm. I did speak out at the White House, but the actual petition, which is online right now, is, is uh, relatively new. Um, okay. it's, it's gaining support slowly. It's not, it's not growing as fast I like. Mm-hmm. Um, the subject of teaching youth entrepreneurship, um, doesn't, for some people, they understand it. For a lot of people, it just doesn't seem to be a hot button because they're not mm-hmm. connecting the dots of how that connects to our economy five, ten years from now. I mean, if we launch this, in two, if we could launch this by 2013, we could create 21 yeah. million new net jobs by 2020 by launching entrepreneurship education at K-12 schools. 21 million new jobs, which, by the way, would improve our GDP down the road because we'd be starting new companies, creating new products and services, and then, and then reverse that trend that's going on between us and China. Um, so if, I think if people understood how, the, how all these dots connected back to the youth, I think there'd be a lot more a lot more hop on. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking for more press on it. I mean, that's why I'm talking to you. And, you know, there 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 are there are some people behind this, like NFT and Right. Uh, some folks at junior achievement and stuff like that, but uh, we, we could okay. certainly use a lot more. No, no, absolutely, and I, I think you're really hitting the nail on the head. <clears throat> Excuse me, you know, I mean, I, you're, you're, there's not many people out there that are that are talking about this the way you're talking about it. That's why, you know, maybe you're not getting as much press in the beginning, but I think, you know, once you get maybe places like Kaufman and other, and other foundations like that in the mix, I just think people won't be able to ignore it much longer. And quite, quite frankly, let's look how the how the economy is. I mean, they're not going to be able to ignore it uh, pretty soon at all. So, I really yeah, commend Kaufman, what you're doing. Junior Achievement, you know, NFT, all those all those folks were there at the uh, fee summit. Yeah, that's great. And you know, everybody was focused on you know, everybody understands at that level that hey, entrepreneurs create jobs, jobs help the economy, jo- jobs right. uh, improve the GDP. Jo- you know. It, it, it's all about the entrepreneur. They get that. What a lot of Absolutely. people don't understand is that it has to start at a young age because look, by the time a kid's 16, 17, 18 years old, he's already formed stereotypes about himself, what he's capable of. He hates mm-hmm. math. He likes English. A lot of that stuff's formed. Or worse, you know, they drop out, they join a gang, they get in trouble. Or they walk in, they go on to college, you know, in pursuit of a job. In many cases, you know, that type of job's not even there. And right. so... You have to back up and think where where does a where does a kid start to really start to have these notions about themselves and what they're capable of, and and know and the stereotype themselves and you know what they feel about from peers and what their parents told them they can and can't do it. And that age group is really at fourth, fifth, and sixth grade where you got you have to start planting the seeds then. You know, you're not going to shove a, a hardcore entrepreneurship curriculum down a fifth grader's, uh, you know, you know down their down their coursework so to say, but. You can you can do a fun class that you know maybe they set up a neighborhood car wash after school or, or a lemonade stand or you know they do some kind of peer activity. It's a fun right. exposure to entrepreneurship in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, and then the curriculum elevates. You with me? So by the time they're in eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, totally. twelfth grade, imagine imagine a junior in high school's class class project is to form his first LLC with a couple of his classmates to pick a product or service that they actually launch through a shop page and they sell. Oh, man. And they learn what revenue minus expense equals profit is. For the first time, you learn how to balance a checkbook because that's not being taught in schools. You learn how to how to, how to use a credit card. That's right. That's not being taught in schools. What's being right. you know instead of being taught to go into debt, which is what a lot of, which a lot of us you know we're told to go into college, which is debt, yeah. buy a house, which is debt. And uh, it, it's just a different way of thinking. You know, you, they learn opportunity recognition, how to work with their peers, social things, things that aren't you know. Profit. <laughs> I, think Wall Street, I, think well. War, I think Wall Street forgot about uh, revenue minus expense equals profit 2008. <laughs> well, I mean, I, 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 like, I like the idea. <laughs> I like the idea of starting in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. It's just planting the seed. That's all it really is. You know, you make it fun, you Plant make it interesting. Piece. Yeah, and then, you know, you, you, I mean, let's be honest, what's more important in calculus is great, but if you're not going to go be, become an engineer or something, you know, why don't you learn revenue minus expense? Why don't you learn that kind of stuff? I, I, I'm, I'm completely exactly. on board with you. I know exactly what you're saying. Now, for financial, Ben, what we focus on is personal finance and entrepreneurship for Gen Y. 
Now, I know you, you know you're, you're obviously focused on a little bit younger, but if you could give the members of Gen Y one tip, what would it be? Gen- Generation Y. Yes. Well, I would say, and this is probably a little radical, is to, you know stop looking for a job, start finding something that you love, and that you that that that's pot that you, know, you love to do, that you're passionate about, that you can you know start looking around you and finding something that's missing in society or product or service that people need and are willing to pay for. Right. Connect that with something you love to do, and focus all your energies on that because because money follows boldness and it follows passion, and obviously opportunity recognition. Mm. And if you can find that path, and everybody can, they just have to open their eyes. If you can find that path, you you're, you're, you're experience a lot more happiness and accomplishment in life. Because I, I just think I think the pursuit of the job market and all that good stuff. I'm not telling you know obviously everybody can't do that, but uh, right. a lot more people can today than they realize. Anthony, have you been in contact with uh, MJ DeMarco? Uh, he wrote the Millionaire Fast Lane. The millionaire what? The millionaire fast lane. He also runs a he also runs an entrepreneurship uh, message board. Have you been in contact with him at all? No, I have not. Well, I, I will I will uh, send you an email after after the show. I think you guys would you guys would really I think be able to uh, work together and hopefully uh, you know further this petition. He's he you I mean some of the word some of the things you're, you're you're saying is exactly on par with what with what he's about, and I know you guys would really hit it off. So I will make sure to get that his information over to you. Now, lastly, Anthony, to kind of wrap up here, how can listeners get get in contact with you one, and then also sign the E2 petition? Oh yeah, the uh, the petition actually has its own web page, mm-hmm. which is the uh, www.esquaredpetition.com, which okay. you could Google or just go to, and that that brings you to a widget. Because I, I think there's a page there. You see a picture mm-hmm. of me on there. There's a little story on why I started it and. Right. The statistics, you go to the bottom, there's statistics on why we need to do it, and basically all the stuff we talked about today. And then there's a little widget that so says sign up, and it brings you to change.org. So there's sign up, so it keeps track of, uh, you know, whoever signs it. You simply put your name and address in there. It takes you about, you know, 20 seconds to sign a petition. Okay. Pretty simple process. And then how about, are you on Facebook and Twitter as well? Yeah, I have an entrepreneurship page on Facebook. If you Google Anthony Del Medico, I have the entrepreneurship of Anthony Del Medico. Uh, there's about 10,000 10, followers on that. So, uh, okay. Quite a few people of those have signed the petition. You know, I give out uh, do, you know quotes and advice and tips and stuff like that on entrepreneurship through that page. Okay. And then also there's a page attached to my Dell Visionary site, which is you know just www.dellvisionaries.com. That uh, there's also a petition page on that. So either one of those directions you had, you're going to find the petition splashed all over those pages all right fantastic well anthony it's, it's been a pleasure it's really been a, a nice listening to somebody that i completely agree with and it's you know i i really commend what you're doing and i i really wish you the best of luck and you know hopefully in a few months uh, i'd love to have you back and kind of tell us the progress you're making yeah my ultimate goal would be to get this in front of one of the presidential candidates as one Great. of their platform speeches i don't i don't really care which party but i think it'd be a great platform for one of them to write on absolutely um, good deal i appreciate it appreciate the uh publicity and help you know all. all right n- not a problem take care thanks bud Bye. all right thanks a lot Okay, everybody, that was Anthony Domenico. Now, make sure to sign the, the E-squared petition. I've been calling it e so E-squared petition for entrepreneurship education at E-squaredpetition.com. Now, it's E2petition.com. That's the full web address for you. Now, I want to thank you for joining us. It's really been a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And make sure to check out financialbin.com for the latest on personal finance and entrepreneurial advice for Generation Y. And don't forget to pick up your copy of Entrepreneur Intervention. Landlord Intervention coming out in just a few weeks. Now, until next time, I'm David Domzowski. Thanks for listening.